Today we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. Your state standard is listed first. Beneath that is your success criteria. So today you need to be able to find probabilities using the fundamental counting principle. You need to be able to explain the difference between permutation and combinations. You need to be able to find numbers of permutations and combinations. And you need to be able to find probabilities using permutations and combinations. Some new vocabulary terms that you need to be aware of. First is the fundamental counting principle. So the fundamental counting principle is used to find the number of ways that two or more events can occur in a sequence. If one event can occur in m ways and another event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways the event can occur in a sequence is m times n. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in which order is important. All right, so that's very important to remember. Permutation order is important. For instance, the six possible permutations of the letters A, B, and C are shown. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six different ways you can rearrange these three letters. All right, again, permutation order is important. In factorial, for any positive integer n, the product of the integers from 1 to n is called n factorial and is written as n exclamation point. So if you see that n exclamation point in mathematics, that means n factorial. That's equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. And then the dot, dot, dot means continue, remember, and then all the way down to 1. So that's n factorial. So if you have so many objects, and it'd be like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay, that can be written as 5 factorial. All right, combination is your last vocab word, is a selection of objects in, in which order is not important. So permutation order is important. Combination order is not important. Example 1, using the fundamental counting principle. A door requires a three-digit code to be opened. None of the digits in the code are the same. All right, so that's important to note. None of the digits in the code are the same. What is the probability that you guess the code on the first try? All right, so this represents three digits. All right, so in the first spot, we can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's 10 possible numbers from 0 to 9. There is 10 possible numbers that could go in that first digit. All right, since it says that none of the digits are the same, that means one of these 10 is used here. So there's one less that can be used here because you can't use the same digit that you used in the first one. So that means the second digit, there's nine possible numbers that could be the second digit. And since none of the digits are the same, that means there's only eight possible numbers because I've already used two for the first two spots, eight possible numbers for that third digit. All right, so that gives us how many possible outcomes there are. So we can use the fundamental counting principle for that, which says we just multiply m times n, in this case, m times n times q or whatever you have want to use for the letter for the thir third digit here. But we're just going to do 10 times 9 times 8. And that tells us how many different codes, how many different possible codes that there could be for this three-digit code where none of the digits are the same. So that's 720. All right, so it says, what is the probability that you guess the code on the first try? So that means you're only going to try one time. So it's going to be 1 out of 720 possible combinations that you guess it on the first try. So let's see, that would be one 
divided by 720. Point zero zero one, and we can round that to a four. So point zero zero one four. All right, so if you move the decimal two places, that means it's going to be about point one four percent. So very, very slim chance that you're going to guess that on your first try. Example two, counting permutations. All right, so again, remember a permutation is objects or letters in which the order is important, okay? So it says, consider the letters in the word July. So there's four letters, they're all different in the word July. In how many ways can you arrange all of the letters? So the choices for the first letter, if you mix these letters up, there's four choices, four letters that could represent the first letter. Okay, so if you're just arranging them in different order, there's four letters there. Since one's being used the first time, that means there's three letters now to be used in the second spot, two for the third spot, and when you get to the last letter, there's only one left, so you can say one. So what you can do is multiply four times three times two times one, and that gives you how many different ways you can write the word July. So four times three times two times one. So there are 24 different ways to write the letters in the word July. Now, this is called, uh, or this can be written as a factorial. So four factorial, that was one of your definitions, is the same as four times three times two times one. And there is a button in your calculator here. If you go to math and go over to probability, you're going to see the, permuta or the factorial button. There's also a permutation and combination button, which we're going to go over shortly as well. But number four is the factorial button. So here's how you use that. If you want to do four factorial, you're going to go four math over to probability and down to four. So that's going to put in four factorial and that's going to give you 24 just like four times three times two times one. So that button is in your calculator. All right, so that's A part and how many ways can you arrange all the letters? B part says, and how many ways can you arrange two of the letters? All right, so if we're only looking at two of the letters, we still have four letters to choose from for the first one, and we take one away, and because there's three different letters, J, U, L, and Y, they're all different letters, so that means the second letter, there are three choices. So that means there are 12 different ways that you can rearrange two letters in the word July. All right, so B part can also be found by using the permutation formula. So here is the permutation formula. And this tells you that the number of permutations of N objects taken R at a time, where R is less than or equal to N. So for B part, you found um, that the permutation is four letters and it's taken two at a time. So we can use this formula here as 4P2. So it'd be 4P2. And these are actually subscripts. So these look smaller because these are actually subscripts. All right, so this equals this formula here. So on top, it's going to be four factorial, okay, in the number in the front. That's your top number here over N minus R. So N minus R. So on the bottom, you're going to have four minus two. 
and that's going to be factorial as well. Now you can figure that out manually, but there's also, like I told you, a button in the calculator that will help you do this as well. So four permutation, two at a time. So four objects, or in this case, four letters, taken two at a time, and we're going to use the calculator to do that. So if we do that, we're going to have to put in the four first, and then go math, over to probability and then NPR. So come down to number two and then put in the two. So four permutation, two at a time, hit enter, and it's gonna give you 12. So you can see that we did four times three and got 12. If we use this formula, you would also get 12. And if you use your calculator, you will also get 12. If you're using um, a calculator on your ACT or whatever, that's going to be the quickest way to get to the answer most of the time. Um, but if you don't have a TI-84 calculator, you still can use this formula uh, to be able to get the answer. So A part was found using a factorial, B part permutation. Example three, using the permutation formula. 10 horses run in a race, and how many different ways can the horses finish first, second, and third? Assume there are no ties. All right, so this is going to be 10 horses run in a race, so that's how many horses there are, Permuta permutation, and three at a time. So if you want to use the formula, again, we're going to have 10 factorial on top, and on the bottom, we're going to have 10 minus 3, factorial. So you can use your calculator in two ways. Again, if we use the factorial button, let's do this both ways just to see which way you like the best. So if we go to math and down to four, that's our factorial button. So 10 factorial. So that's going to be 3628800. All right, so that is the number on top. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 is 7. So we're going to have 7 factorial on the bottom. All right, 50, 40. All right, and since we are just dividing... We're going to have 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, 0, 0, divided by 50, 40, and it's 720. All right, now let's quickly use the calculator to do the exact same thing. So we're going to do 10 permutation three at a time. So let's do 10, go to math. We are doing probability, so we're going to do probability number two for permutation, and then put in the three, and then it's going to be 720. So you can see that the formula is going to give you the same thing if you use your calculator, it's the same thing as using this formula right here.